I get some comments from men that say MGTOW and that basically means men going their own way. This movement emerged somewhere in the early 2000s and in my opinion, these are men who are still butthurt about women who want to date up. Upon hearing that women are naturally hypergamous, men just cannot accept it and swallow that pill. You can't get mad at biology. Men in the MGTOW movement think that they can live life and go on with life without women and be happy. Well, while that can be true for a lot of men, in the end, we need each other. Men need women and women need men because at the end of the day, our purpose in life is to procreate. Let's look at the genetic history of humankind. You'll see that roughly 50% of men didn't reproduce, while about 100% of women did reproduce. So what does that tell you? That tells you that the top 10% of men get 90% of the women. Thus supports my theory of hypergamy. Yo, what is going on guys? I hope you are all doing well. So it has been some time since I've done a video on a subject like this, but basically we have here a woman who is complaining about the fact that men are not doing things such as getting married, men are not jumping into relationships, men are opting out of society, men are not supporting people who don't have their best interest at heart. And of course, guys, all of this is labeled as toxic. It is apparently a problem because men are expected to be the backbone of society. Now, guys, when you see videos like this of people complaining about men withdrawing from society, they're not complaining because it's unhealthy for men. They're not, un you know, complaining because they're concerned about the health or the well-being of the guys who want to go their own way. The reason why they're complaining is because they lose something in the equation. And we're going to be getting into that today guys i've actually got a, a dating profile i wanted to show you guys over on bumble as we get into today's episode where i'm going to show you the type of women who it, it's it, essentially guys it's the women who lose out the men who go their own way the guys who are like you know what screw this i'm gonna go you know live in my caravan out in the woods i don't want to deal with society i'm not interested in marriage i don't want to have kids it's not these men that are being affected it's the women who are being affected and the girls who get to 40 and they come crying saying, you know, where are all of the hard working men going? But guys, let's jump into this video and we're going to break it down piece by piece. Hopefully we won't. You know what's interesting, guys? It's like whenever I do videos like these, videos like these have keywords in it where I actually have to be concerned about the video getting flagged. Like, isn't that crazy how I can record a video like this and like there's a chance that it'll just get taken down, removed or age restricted because we're talking about men who are not interested in doing things such as marriage. Like, isn't that, doesn't that give you guys some perspective? But let's jump into this video again. And then we're going to jump into a dating profile followed by a little bit of a Reddit story. So let's take a listen to this woman. And uh, guys, as always, don't forget to leave your thoughts and your comments. I get some comments from men that say MGTOW, and that basically means men going their own way. This movement emerged somewhere in the early 2000s. And in my opinion, these are men who are still butthurt about women. Who yeah, guys, like it couldn't be for any other reason. It couldn't be for a sane, logical reason of, I don't know, wanting to protect your assets or not wanting to lose your children or not wanting to, you know, get locked up for something you didn't do based on an accusation. It can't have anything to do with these logical, you know, these logical reasons that men might have. Absolutely nothing. Of, of course, guys, it has to be because men are butt hurt. You know, men are just salty. And I, and I tell you what, guys, like a lot of the men who come to these conclusions are not necessarily married, are not necessarily divorced. They just have enough sense to perhaps learn from the older gentlemen or the guys who have gone through these situations saying, listen, don't make the same mistake I did. Okay, guys, I released a video not too long ago where I encouraged some of you guys to leave some comments uh, at the end of the video. And I said, guys, listen, a lot of these girls, they end up lying about their partners. They say, narrow, you know, they say terrible things about their ex-boyfriends. You come to find out that in a lot of instances, it isn't true. Do you guys have any stories where that has happened to you, where your ex-wife, your ex-partner has lied about you in some very serious way? And wouldn't you know it, guys, the comments were full of you guys able to give me examples of many times when, when, when you know, women would come out here and outright lie about guys. Oftentimes, you know, these things would have serious 
serious repercussions, okay? So, guys, these are based... Videos like these are so disingenuous because it assumes that men are just doing this for no reason because we're emotional little crybabies. You know, just completely dismissing the fact that there is a true injustice being done here. One of the biggest of which comes to mind is that dudes are literally losing their children over stuff like this. But let's keep going with the video. Who want to date up. Upon hearing that women are naturally hypergamous, men just cannot accept it and swallow that pill. You can't get mad at biology. Men in the NGTLW movement think that they can live life and go on with life without women and be happy. Well, while that can be true for a lot of men, in the end, we need each other. Men need women and women need men because at the end of the day, our purpose in life is to procreate. Not true. Okay. A lot of guys simply, and she says it here, but then she doubles back down on it, which makes no sense. A lot of men do not need women to be happy. They, they really do not. Maybe it's like guys are younger, they think that their purpose can be found in women. But I think particularly as dudes get older, you know, they mature a little bit or, you know, they just have this, you know, understanding early on. Like a lot of guys understand that their happiness is not going to be found in women. Okay, and a lot of guys find that out the hard way. Maybe you're a dude who's like, I don't know, 16 through to 19. You go through some serious heartbreak and crap like that. And then, you you know, you kind of learn these things where you understand that, not only will women not make you happy, but prioritizing women is a terrible idea. Number one, because it'll set you behind in life. Number two, it's, you know, it's just a huge capital investment that there's not necessarily a, a reward on. And number three, women don't want to be your priority anyway. You know, like a lot of girls will say that they want to be your priority, but you treat them like the priority and all of a sudden your life is in shambles and she hates you and she loses respect for you. So it is what it is. Let's keep going. Let's look at the genetic history of humankind you'll see that roughly 50% of men didn't reproduce, while about 100% of women did reproduce. So what does that tell you? That tells you that the top 10% of men get 90% of the women. I'm not sure like why she brings this up as like kind of like a gotcha moment, you know? Because, because here's the thing, if 90% of women want the top percent of men, there's, the, you know, the facts surrounding this are that most men are straight up invisible to women. The dudes who are not in the top 10%, and I would even argue that it's smaller than the top 10%, the dudes who are not at the very top get treated terribly by women. They absolutely do. And a lot of these, you know, in a lot of these cases, women will quote unquote settle with these guys who aren't the top 10%, say that they love them, say that they care about them. But really, excuse me if you could hear that, guys, you know, really she's just there because the guy who she really wants wouldn't commit to her. And all of a sudden it's rocking up to 28 years of age. She has to go out there. She has to get married and she has to make things happen. She doesn't actually care about like, see this statistic right here is like, it's simultaneously quite inspiring to a lot of guys because, you know, you can grind, you can get into the top percent. But it also says something like, you know, you've also got to understand that most men are completely invisible to women. And, you know, you can go out there and, and this is where things like uh, discussions about the black pill come in and things like that, okay? Because these top percent of men, what it really means is these top percent, uh, 10 percent of men are, are hyper successful. They're hyper attractive, okay? They're dudes who have hit the gym for a long period of time. And that doesn't exactly square up to the lies that men have been told all throughout their lives of, you know, oh, women just want dad bods. They don't care if you're unambitious. Stay the way you are. People are going to love you regardless. And men find out the hard way that they don't actually get loved if they're a loser, Right, if a, a girl can be a loser and she'll get love, a guy can be a loser and nobody will talk to him for four years at a time. It, it, you know, and that's the difference between men and women in these situations. But guys, let's, that's the end of her little video right there. Let's jump into this uh, this dating profile. Now, this is so we have the woman at the beginning in the TikTok complaining about you know men who do their own thing are a problem. I'm going to show you the type of women who this is a problem for. And of course, there is many more types of women that this is a problem for. It's not just exclusive to this kind. But this is one kind of woman who this is a problem for. So hopefully I can hit the right button here, man. I've lost the... Uh, I think it might be this one. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So this is a Bumble profile, and this is a girl who looks to be, I want to say, early 20s, something like that. I don't know. You can never... Dude, you can never tell with these girls with their ages. Like, she's literally littered in tattoos. She's got two chest tattoos. She looks quite young. You never really know. But check this out. So this is a, a Bumble dating profile. Um, and it, her little about me section here says, she is seeking a non-prenuptial marriage. 
let, let that sink in, guys. She has specifically stated that not only does she... She didn't just say that she wants to get married. This woman has been very clear about it. She wants your assets, okay? And it says here she's a mother. She's got two hearts next to it, as if that makes it any less terrifying. Um, and she says, if you can continuously make me laugh, we are set. And she says, yes, I am really an accountant. Couple things to break down here, guys. A lot of the girls on these applications, it's like a running gag where they say that they're accountants, but really they're doing like spicy work on the side, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and this line, this is what I'm talking about when I say that men are just downright lied to every single second. Like, look at this. If you can continuously make me laugh, we're set. Like, what do men look like to you? Like, this whole idea that men have to be funny is so overrated, guys. It, it is, in my view, it's something that's incredibly overrated. A girl does not give a crap if she's laughing or not, if you're if she's very attracted to you. It does not matter. It, it really does not. Like, girls will say, man, I want a guy who's a dad bod who's, like, funny, who's going to, like, take me out on all these dates. But the dude who she's actually attracted to doesn't have to meet any of these criteria. The dude who she's highly attracted to, guys, can sit there say invite her over at 2 a.m in the morning say nothing and she's gonna show up even though she's incredibly tired and she has work at like you know 6 30 in the morning or something like that she will show up if she's attracted to you and guys like i want to i want to give you guys a specific example right this there's a youtuber on uh, on youtube obviously his name's austin dunham right give that guy a google look at the images this is the type of man that women are chasing Okay, and you, you think that, you know, a girl who's attracted to a guy like that, she's going to care if he makes her laugh. Like, it's, it's insane to me, man. But let's have a look at some more of her basics here. So she's looking for a non-prenuptial marriage. She's a single mother. Um, of course, just craziness, man. She says that she's five foot four. She drinks socially. She's looking. So look at this. She doesn't even. She's put here that she wants a marriage, but at the same time, she says put. She doesn't know yet here. So she's still open to, you know, seeing, uh, seeing random dudes and having short term things going on. She has children and she doesn't want more. So if you come along and you decide to have a kid with this woman, uh, sorry, you want to have a kid with this woman, she doesn't want a kid because she already has them. She already has them. So you're expected to not only provide for her kid, you're expected to get into a marriage with her. And then you, if you're a man who wants a kid, you don't even get a kid out of the situation anyway. <laughs> like, like what on earth is this, man? And uh, I always laugh when I see these, these like dating profiles, man, where like girls will say that they want X, Y, Z, and they'll list like a bunch of things that are ne negative characteristics about themselves. And then they'll have like their five foot four. And I always think like, if a dude had these same things, he would be immediately disqualified. But this is the kind of girl, right, who is affected by dudes who are not interested in committing to her. Okay, and unfortunately, less and less so though, guys, because, you know, obviously the government will step in and provide for these women. But these are the types of women who ends up, you know, they end up to be 28 years of age, 30 years of age, 40 years of age, etc. And they ask themselves the question, where have all of the good men gone? But it, throughout their life, they've made a series of poor decisions, getting with dudes, having children with men who are not going to be there or who they know aren't going to be there or who they, who they remove from the picture. And they expect men to, you know, to swing in and, uh, and to save them. Now, guys, I have one final little Reddit story I have here that I wanted to show you guys. I haven't read through it entirely myself, um, but this is from a subreddit who doesn't exactly, you know, they call people who watch my videos and etc. cetera uh, incels and things like this. But even these people are coming to the understanding that, you know, dating is not necessarily worth the effort here. As you can see, the title is, it's true, women don't make any effort in dating. And it says... I think this is a bit of a follow-on from a recent discussion about there being no incentive to date. I feel there are elements of that complaint that were true. And I say that as a man who's been wildly successful with the opposite gender. I feel like women right now are not really putting in any effort, and it's kind of amusing to see. Don't get me wrong, uh, this isn't, you know, a way to justify the complaints of iCells. I've got to say the word differently, man, because, again, YouTube kind of loses their mind at, at words like this. Like, you can't even have a, a, a correct discussion on YouTube anymore. It's incredibly sad. 
says, I legit think it's a good thing that the standards for men have increased. No, you don't deserve to have a stunning girlfriend being a slob who's unemployed and who has no hobbies but video games. Yes, I do think modern women are lacking when it comes to masculinity and achievement. M modern men, excuse me, but I do feel there is a sizable chunk of men who do buck the trend and are out there still full of ambition, desire, and drive who feel much of this effort goes underappreciated. You know, I think I actually might have covered this article um, in a recent video, guys, but, you know, look at this right here. I don't know many men who walk around, who do absolutely nothing, who feel entitled to some stunning model girlfriend or something like that. But conversely, guys, I know a lot of women who will come out here and they will say, look, I want a guy who meets all of my criteria, who ticks all of my boxes. And, uh, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't earn very much money. She's not pleasant to be around. Like, she hasn't done anything with her life, but she expects to come along and to be able to lock down a guy who's done a lot with his life. I'm not saying that women are attractive based on their job at all, but you see the point, guys. Like, a lot of these girls are, you know, they're disagreeable, they're unpleasant to deal with, they're not even successful themselves, and yet they demand that kind of success from men, and then they complain when they don't get those things. And even the dudes who are wildly successful and are quite attractive, oftentimes, um, you know, even then, a lot of the girls will feel the ego of being able to you know, get uh, some some bedroom action with dudes of similar status anyway. So, like, dudes are just all across the board in a lot of cases um, being treated as, you know, I wouldn't even say anywhere close to equals, guys. I think this word sums it up perfectly here. Underappreciated. I really do think a lot of dudes who go out here and who have a genuine crack at dating find out the hard way that they are underappreciated no matter really what it is that they do. So the article goes on to say, uh, I notice in two areas particularly, my friends on Tinder Bumble conversations seem to fizzle out way quicker than I remember experiencing myself and my friends look great. Despite not being single, I still go out and converse with the opposite gender and I'm pretty damn attractive so I get hit on regularly. What I used to be the occasional smile, compliment, etc. All I get now is people coming up and dropping my friend fancies you and wants to say hello. Yeah, but guys, women will not do the same, like, <laughs> men are expected to do everything. Like, literally, men are expected to have some sort of excuse if you want to get her back to your house. Okay, you're expected to approach her. You're expected to pay on the date because you're expected to provide her with plausible deniability so that she can lie and say, oh, you know, one thing led to another. It wasn't really my fault. I didn't even realize these things were going to happen. I didn't realize we were going to hook up or get together or anything like that, right? So she needs the the plausible deniability here. And guys, when it's funny because I'll see girls say, man, guys need to step up their game, right? They need to text us better. They need to learn to flirt properly. And girls' game is literally getting their friends to come over and say hi to you. How hilarious is that? But guys, I think we're going to leave today's effort there. Uh, what do you think, guys? Do you guys think that men who are choosing to go their own direction in life are a problem? Um, have you guys had this complaint leveraged against you? I would gather to say, guys, that a lot of you guys uh, who are watching this video, perhaps you're a man who's chosen to not, you know, not go out there and date, not marry, not get kids. And, you know, chances are you've probably experienced some social backlash, shall we say, uh, for going and doing your own thing, guys. So if you have any stories, any comments you'd like to leave, feel free to do so, guys. Um, and as always, gentlemen, make sure that you take care of yourselves, and I'll be seeing you all in the next episode. Peace.